Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my week 51 wrap up. Almost done with the year. And my sister is in town visiting from Japan, so I've been doing a lot of going back and forth between my house and my parents' house to spend as much time with her as I can, having a wonderful time. So my reading has slowed a little bit, but I'm, I still feel like I've been getting good quality of reading because I'm also, I took vacation time off so I could see her. Jumping into it, my reading wrap up, how am I doing? So this week I finished Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. This is the second standalone in her resolution universe. Don't know if, the, if that's the actual title for the universe or not. And this follows Timelhen and Surit, who are two soldiers. One is conscripted and one is enlisted, and they both have powers, and these powers are set up so they can sync to one another and become more powerful. Except the conscripted one does not want to do that. And when the enlisted one finds out that the conscripted one is not willing, he also doesn't want to do it. He was willing to do the sync if the conscripted one was also willing. So that's kind of sets up a fake, a fake sync which is kind of similar to fake dating, right? I don't know, it was a lot of fun. This is not a direct sequel to Winner's Orbit. The resolution is a galactic government organization that has a treaty with both the planetary system from Winner's Orbit and the Orshan planetary system where these two are located. So that is the link between those books. Otherwise, you're not going to see Kim and Jainan. So this is a, a sci-fi romance, and the romance is very slow burn. It goes through friendship first. And then it definitely addresses romance when there's a power imbalance, because you'll see whoever is has the power of the other one is like, nope, yep, can't, we can't do this, nope. Even if the other one's like, I'm okay with it, they're like, nope, nope still can't. So you don't actually get the payoff for the romance until neither of them has a power over one another, which is, I thought, very intelligent when you're coming to approach a relationship. Also, I know one of the complaints for Winner's Orbit was a big miscommunication trope because there's just things that Jainan didn't tell Kiam and it, he just withheld that information. They don't do that in this one. When Tenelhen and Surit get together, and once they figured out, wait, one of us is not willing to do the sync, and the other one was only willing to do it if the other one was willing, they their reasons for it come out pretty quick, and they are very much on board of, okay, we're going to fake this sync to get the one who is, does not want to be in it, get them out of, um, out of the situation completely. And the other one, it was doing this because it's part of, or they are looking to reinstate a pension from their gene parent, which is the parent that they got most of their genetic code from. And so they, they're balancing both of their wants and desires and trying to figure out a way to get them both what they want without hurting the other one. And there's certain sacrifices that they're willing to make for it for each other which is nice to see as well because it's not just a neither one is like oh let me just take advantage of you it it is a partnership that they have created so in this one maxwell did not play with the miscommunication trope at all it's like if there was any miscommunication between them it was about not knowing fully of the plan for the escape and that got uh, sorted out pretty quickly i love the characters here both of these mains I really enjoy, and I love the side characters. I think that I like this one actually more than Winner's Orbit. I'd have to go back and look how my rating fell. They both came out to the same thing on Goodreads, but the actual percentage number I would be... Percentage number... But the actual percentage number might be different. 
I also just like the sci-fi story of this. It very much centers around the powers and how the powers came to be. And this book does deal with remnants, which is something that we see like on the side of the first book. Or at least in the first book, the main characters don't themselves don't have a lot to do with the remnants. And here we get to see that another or another planetary system has been messing around with the remnants and use those to give their people powers inadvertently. And we find out more what the remnants are about. And so it's more expanding the world while at the same time having a story that is in one planetary system. And I am really hoping we're going to get more. I, I want to know what's going on with the resolution. It, it just sounds fascinating to me. We have a bigger system out there and they both, both this book and Winter's Orbit has talked about another planetary system called the High Chain and I'm curious how that works into things as well. This is something I really enjoyed and I realize I'm not going into very much detail about it right now. I will be doing a new release uh, and wrap up for it. Eventually I'm hoping to get all my 2022s caught up and out in January as like extra videos, not planned videos otherwise. That way I will be ready for 2023. And then I continued working on Echoes of Another Earth by J. Daniel Layfield. I am about halfway through this one currently. Really enjoying it. It's definitely a fast-paced science fiction as the main character Josh is Meet, met up with his best friend Dave who he's basically had the same friend in many different alternates. He kind of knows how Dave was going to be for the most part and you know telling him hey what's going on and I was very surprised that Dave found out so early in the book but then also Dave has been a great motivator motivator for helping Josh to make decisions and to act upon information that he gains. So it makes sense. And then that is next to the story where you're following Chelsea and Byron who are from another parallel that has interdimensional travel capabilities and they're trying to find a criminal and the story is intersecting both of those. So I am having fun with this. I should hopefully, hopefully finish it this next week. And then I barely started Mendelpunk Bruja. Not getting to read it is kind of the idea as I was thinking. I was wanting to kind of do a vlog style. Maybe for a wrap up, I will do more with things around Kansas City, especially as um, I didn't know this at the time that I was thinking of this, but there's this nice map at the beginning of the book that shows the different places that are important and I mean I know where most of these places are or at least I'm very familiar with and things like Rose's apartment well hey you gave me a nice block area so I can lay that with today's map and kind of be like well this is the area we're thinking that her apartment is in so I I'm gonna still do something fun with Kansas City and this book um, but probably not a vlog style just because I haven't been able to do that with my sister here. The cold weather changed how we were planning to visit places in Kansas City. I also plan to continue reading that this week. Once I finish Echoes of Another Earth, the next self-published science fiction contest book I'm picking up is going to be The Trellis by Jules Cantor. That will be then like my next focus book. So after the one I'm currently reading, I have four books left and our goal is to have those read by the end of January. So we try to prioritize them one right after another so that way I can get those done and judge so that we, I can, <laughs> so that my team can then have our answers or responses ready to send off. Our top three are then going to be going to two other groups to read and then that will be the semi semifinals. I think that's what they're called. Yeah, because then we'll be getting to, we'll get beginning six books ourselves to read and then we'll vote on those and then I think those goes towards the finals and then that from there that will narrow down to just one book. I think that's how that works. I'm going to leave a link to the website which 
will show you the pro the judging process. So if I've gotten something wrong, hopefully that will clarify that. For my writing wrap up, I have not written this week, but as, like I said, I'm spending time with my sister. That's kind of been my priority. She did say that she would be interested in doing some productivity sprints with me in the next year. So hopefully we'll get that not, or not that, that hopefully we'll be able to get that scheduled so then you guys can join us on a live. For us, we're gonna have to figure out our schedules. It'll probably either be for the United States a Friday night or a Saturday night because then for her in Japan, that would be a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning. Hence why I said that I were gonna have to just kind of figure out her schedule. I know that she is still currently working on a master's program and I think she has a Saturday night class herself. So we might be trying to do a Friday night for a while, but I'll get more information. That might actually be what my first community tab post is. I know I have that capability now thanks to YouTube opening that up, but I haven't used it for anything. So maybe that will be my first one. And for other media, I started watching the Willow TV series. I watched the first three episodes and I have lots of thoughts. So first off, I love the movie. I have loved it since I was a teenager in middle school. And so I was really worried about this. I didn't know what they were doing with it. So I didn't, I'm glad that it's not a rehash of the movie. I like that it's later in the history. That being said, the direction of the story, I am disappointed with currently. So they start us off with meeting Kit and Jade as they are fighting on the stones. And then we meet Kit's twin brother, Eric, as he's romancing a girl who he calls Dove. And so we slowly start meeting everybody. And I was like, okay, I'm fine with this. And then Prince Eric gets captured in the first episode. And now his sister Kit wants to go right out and find him and save him and other people as well. And I'm like, okay. And then they reveal who is Alora Dannon. She's been hidden from herself. And I didn't like the reveal. It felt very clumsy. And now we have the Alora Dannon character acting like, oh, I'm not like other girls. And we have Kit and the girl she likes, Jade, bickering because she find Kit found, has found out that Jade was letting her win when in their sword play. I guess I should have said these are going to be mild spoilers, sorry. And just the execution of a lot of the story is coming off as if I was reading a young adult novel and I'm not happy about it. I think that some interesting things could have been done with this series, but the route that they're going, yeah, I, I'm not interested in teenage angst. So at this moment, I'm, I'm afraid to start the fourth episode because I'm like, oh, what are you guys going to do? Yeah, so that kind of sucks. But some other things is my husband and I that were able to find a copy of Die Hard. And so we watched Die Hard and then Die Hard 2 on Christmas Eve. That was you know, nice Christmas movies that they are. If you've seen them, you know, and that was a lot of fun. And I actually did not know that either, that both of those movies were based off of books by different people. When I was looking at Goodreads, they showed three books, but they said the first two were written as books. And then the third one was specifically done as a novelization for the third movie. And I was like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> And, you know, being a book lover that I am, I'm like, well, now I'm curious to go back and read those books and see how they compare. It sounds like the first book is set in the 70s, and I think the movie is very much set, like, late 80s, early 90s for technology-wise, so that will be interesting to see. And then I've been just catching up on the Writing Excuses podcast. I had gotten behind. I hadn't been listening for a while. I'm just, you know, finishing up the year. I'm curious to see how they do things next year. They haven't announced that yet. I think that'll be next Sunday. So yeah, that has been my week 51. I am excited for this final week of December to do my wrap up with you. 
and coming out soon after this video should be my 2023 goals and then I'll do my 2022 wrap up goal wrap up and then probably go over my stats. In January you're going to be getting two videos of favorites one that is going to be novels and novellas and then the other is going to be short stories and novelettes because I've read way more short stories this year than I typically do. So I look forward to sharing those with you in January. And I hope you guys are all having a good winter so far. I know that the storms have started to subside. Thank you and have a great day.